What is WorldCoin, the cryptocurrency that scans your eyes? Imagine creating AI, then creating a project that combats it. It's like giving everyone COVID and then selling the cure. You see, WorldCoin is a global project that aims to create a digital currency in order to implement a form of universal basic income, UBI. It is designed to be a cryptocurrency that's distributed for free to as many people as possible to create a fairer global economic system. Just remember, when something is free, you are the product. The World Organization plans to give every single human on Earth a unique identity through iris scanning technology, which it uses to verify individual identity and prevent multiple signups. But listen to this. The person behind the project is Sam Altman, former president of Y Combinator and the creator of OpenAI, the mother of all artificial intelligence. I run. I think it'd be good to end poverty. Maybe you think we should stop a technology that can do that. I personally don't. It's funny how the same man who claims that AI has already begun destroying multiple career fields. GPT-4 will, uh, I think, entirely automate away some jobs. Is the same one who invented it and is now pushing for a cryptocurrency-based world ID built on biometric data to combat the problem of knowing what is or is not real in the digital landscape of generative AI. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. How does this work? The process starts with a device known as the orb, which scans the iris of an individual. The orb is a big shiny camera designed to capture iris data accurately to prevent fraud. Orbs are equipped with machine learning algorithms to detect fraudulent activities, like using colored contacts or scanning non-human eyes. And apparently it uses zero knowledge proofs as part of this process to maintain privacy, meaning that while it confirms that each wallet address belongs to a unique individual, it doesn't know who the wallet belongs to. WorldCoin will be an ERC-20 token and will have a maximum supply of 10 billion tokens. This number is designed to correspond to the estimated global population. Initially, 2 billion tokens will be used to fund ORB production and initial protocol development. So off the get-go, creators get 2 billion. Got it. The remaining 8 billion tokens will be allocated to ORB operators and WorldCoin users. So you know, the current world population is 7.8 billion people. But in reality, the distribution model is similar to that of a multi-level marketing scheme. The number of WorldCoin tokens that the ORB operators earn and the amount that the user receive upon sign up will decrease over time to incentivize early adoption. Let's be real, there are a lot of issues concerning all the sensitive biometric data being stored for misuse or breach. There are also ethical concerns about consent, especially involving minors in countries where WorldCoin orbs are being operated meaning they are taking advantage of developing countries and bribing them for $20 worth of crypto. It's sickening that they are targeting them primarily because these regions have a large unbanked population who may benefit from access to digital currency. And they probably do not fully understand the implications of giving up their biometric data or the potential risks associated with participation. There's also the worry about WorldCoin's ability to resist governmental pressures, potentially forcing them to disclose personal data. The project's focus on developing countries raises concerns about exploiting vulnerable populations. But let's be real, UBI doesn't work. You see, the universal basic income is a concept where everyone within a population receives a standard amount of money with no strings attached. As we all know, nothing in life is free. And if they say everyone's entitled to a coin, why are they decreasing the amount after early adopters scan their eyes? And why is WorldCoin dangerous? Aside from it taking all the extensive biometric data it collects, iris scans are unique identifiers. And if this data were breached or misused, it could have significant privacy implications, meaning you will forever be trapped. So yeah, don't look into the orb. This is by far the scariest thing invented. I say scariest because originally they were going to back it up by Bitcoin, but they realized they can't control Bitcoin and they can control WorldCoin. And don't leave, we got Matt O'Dell backstage. You're huge on privacy. What's one thing 
that you recommend everybody should do or that you do in your everyday life to maintain yourself private? The start is to care. And like, you know, I know that some people are critical of me. They say like, oh, Matt, you're a hypocrite. You know, you talk about privacy publicly. You see my face here right now. You don't have to be Jason Bourne. Just understand that a lot of your life is being tracked. Understand where that tracking is happening and try and consent to it. Be careful about what information you are sharing out there. But like little things, you know, um, Alexa's, Google Homes, like if you're listening to this right now and I say, okay, Google, and something is queuing up in your home, you know, maybe don't have that. Don't have that microphone in your house, you know, Google Maps, it's tracking you everywhere you go. So it goes beyond Bitcoin. Um, I think it's just important for people to understand the trade-offs, make educated decisions, and just understand, you know, what information is, is going out there about them. You know how Satoshi in the white paper he wrote about making Bitcoin public to track. Do you think that was a good idea? Yeah, I mean, look, I think ultimately uh, Bitcoin is a tool and it just matters how you use that tool. Every tool has trade-offs, right? And Bitcoin has a certain set of trade-offs and those set of trade-offs made Bitcoin very successful. Uh, it led to the adoption of Bitcoin. It means it's very transparent. It's very easy to audit, but you can use Bitcoin privately. Just the most important thing to realize when you're getting started is just that it's not anonymous by default, particularly if you're buying on a regulated exchange. They're keeping a list of your name, your mailing address, who you are, maybe a face scan. They're like scanning faces now, like your social security number. Um, and they're tying that to your Bitcoin transaction. So if you don't learn how to use Bitcoin privately and learn how to use those tools, you will be tracked when you use Bitcoin. And the first step is just to be aware of that um, and then try and improve your setup. When did Bitcoin click for you? When was that eureka moment that you had when you're like, this is it? Um, I think what I've noticed for myself and for a lot of people, it takes multiple touch points <laughs> before you figure out that Bitcoin actually might might work, right? If you're a technical person, you know, maybe you can verify the code, maybe you can use your own node. Um, but for most people, that confidence just comes with time, right? And it was no different for me. You know, I had a friend introduce me to Bitcoin. I told him it can never work. Um, and then I had a second friend introduce me to Bitcoin. And then I was like, okay, these two friends are completely different types of friends. Like, why are they both introducing me to Bitcoin? And then there was a long process of just me like diving deep into Bitcoin and trying to figure out, I was trying to figure out how it couldn't work. And that built my conviction over time. Now for a quick recap of the week. WorldCoin is already suspended in Kenya. Thousands of young people in Nairobi had been lining up at various retail stores to have their eyes scanned to verify their humanity. The Kenyan government has ordered the cryptocurrency project to stop signing up new users, citing data privacy concerns, and warned citizens to be cautious giving their information to private companies because hackers can use this to access someone's bank account, health records, apply for loans, or other malicious uses. Meanwhile, the SEC finally charged Richard Hart, AKA Richard Schuler, for scamming people. You're not gonna meet another product like this as long as you live. Yes, every scammer in the world is gonna tell you something similar. Hart launched Hex, Pulse Chain, and PulseX, raising more than $1 billion in crypto assets from investors. Obviously, he defrauded investors of millions he obtained through the illegal sales of unregistered crypto asset securities, which he then used to make extravagant purchases, like a $4.3 million black diamond called the Enigma. I own the world's biggest diamond, you don't, I do. A $1.38 million Rolex, a half a million dollar McLaren, and a 300K Ferrari Roma. Hope he rots in prison. In other news, U.S. presidential candidate Ron DeSantis includes protect Bitcoin as a key tenant in his economic plan. Uh, Biden's war on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency will come to an end when I become president. Fitch Ratings downgraded its U.S. debt rating on Tuesday from the highest AAA rating to a AA plus, citing a steady deterioration in standards of governance. The downgrade comes after lawmakers negotiated up until the last minute on a debt ceiling deal earlier this year, risking the nation's first default. Tech genius Jack Dorsey says he's willing to work with Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong to build a Bitcoin payment system. All while Brian confirmed that his company is working on integrating Lightning. And that one whale who has big can energy will always be Michael Saylor. Officially, his company now owns around $4.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. 